Welcome to Rotary and Serving Our Community. My name is Wade Nomura, and today we have a program on world peace, uh, peace as Rotary works on it. And with us today, our special guest is uh, Rudy. Rudy uh, Westervelt is actually a governor from an adjacent district, and he is also serving as the conference chair for this year's World Peace Conference. Welcome, Rudy. Oh, thank you, Wade, and I appreciate joining you today and your, and your audience here. <laughs> uh, we wanted to uh, kind of address a little bit about uh, what Rotary does and why it, why it reaches out for world peace. And Great. a little bit about myself first. I'm originally from upstate New York uh, in the Finger Lakes area, beautiful Finger Lakes of upstate New York, and went to uh, Cornell University and the University of Connecticut, go Huskies. And, uh, <laughs> That's a cheap plug, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, had joined the uh, Kroger Company, the largest supermarket chain in the country, and transferred around the United States. My last stop came out here in 2001 in Southern California and uh, have been hooked up with doing service work uh, my entire, uh, mostly my entire life, but hooked up with Rotary out here on the West Coast. And so the, with the Rotary, of course, we are one of our objectives, or the more overarching objective is to create peace in the world. You got it. Now, how did you get involved with Rotary? Uh, we just happened to be working on a service project, uh, working on a, a home called Rebuilding Together, sort of like Habitat for Humanity. And one of the Rotarians on the house we were working on asked if we would join Rotary and join it for breakfast, a free breakfast. <laughs> and so the first year, we didn't. But the second year, we got asked again. <laughs> So you well, got hungry. You got hungry the second year. We needed a breakfast, so, <laughs> so we ended up and, and we uh, drank the uh, Rotary uh, Kool-Aid and have joined it ever since. So. Sounds good. Now, you are currently a governor, correct, serving as a district governor for your district? That's correct. So I'm a district governor over District 5330, which is the Inland Empire of Southern California. Okay. We cover and all of Riverside County and most of half of uh, wow. San Bernardino counties. And how many clubs is that? We have 60 Rotary Clubs and right uh, around 2,200 members. So uh, that's quite a time commitment, I would say, uh, having to be district governor and also running this peace conference. It's uh, a little, a, a little <laughs> large, yes. So yeah, on, okay. we have plenty of duties to do as a, as a Rotary District Governor, visiting your clubs and supporting right. and putting on conferences. But uh, felt it was uh, important for us to take on some bigger issues in our community. How long did it take you, by the way, to drive here, being from the Inland Empire? It's about a three-hour drive. Well, thank you for that. Appreciate your time. Uh, six hours on the road for, uh, for the show. We definitely appreciate that. So thank you very much for that. Um, as far as the conference, the uh, Peace Conference, tell us a little bit about that. Okay, the Peace Conference is uh, uh, designed to provide value to those folks that come here. And again, it's take on some of our bigger issues in our, in our community. So there are solutions out there to things like homelessness. Is that a problem up here? I know it's a problem down in, in Southern California sure. a little further. Our veterans' unemployment uh, being high as, as the highest number of homeless veterans in the United States happens to be right here in the state of California. Oh, interesting. Uh, human trafficking, uh, understand that Sacramento is the uh, highest rate of human trafficking in the United States. And certainly have a lot of that right here, again, in California as well as the United States. Uh, we have uh, PTSD happening with our soldiers, and when our soldiers come back from fighting, uh, uh, it seems like suicide shouldn't be the highest rate of death for our soldiers when they come back home. It's something we need to take care of. In our inner city youth, we're seeing folks uh, uh, killed or murdered out in front of their street or maybe in their home suffering the same PTSD uh, that we have uh, from our veterans. So we have some big issues to take care of and Rot Rotarians are ready and willing to step up and be a part of the process. And so that's where the uh, heart and soul of the Peace Conference uh, was developed from is to look at real solutions out there to these issues. Uh, Rotarians happen to be in all sectors of society. So if we connect our Rotarians together with a variety of ideas that Rotarians have and non-Rotarians have together and give that support, can we move the needle on some of these major issues? Very good. Um, some of the history and the reason why I think Rotary has been involved with it so much is based way back in time. Um, World War II, for example, 1942, uh, Rotary and 20 other, 21 other nations that were represented by Rotary actually formed and created what is now known as UNESCO. Um, how about the United Nations? I understand there's pretty good history in there also. So at the beginning of the United Nations, 49 Rotarians uh, were involved with the signing of and forming of the United Nations right up here in the Bay Area. So uh, we've been an integral part of that, of, of the United Nations, and we actually have joined forces with the United Nations Association USA to help us with the peace conference. And um, that goes back to 1945, I believe, correct? Correct. That first meeting there. Absolutely. And one of the interesting things is recently in a Rotarian magazine, you'll notice that uh, Sir Nicholas Winton 
I was honored of being a 106-year-old Rotarian from the United Kingdom. Uh, when he was a young man, had an opportunity to save over 600 little children from Czechoslovakia right, right before the Nazis closed the border. Uh, and uh, he put them in homes all across Great Britain. That's why he was knighted by the Queen. Uh, he recently passed away, but his daughter Barbara has written a book about his life. Uh, if it's not impossible, then we should do it. So that was pretty much Nick's theme as a Rotarian and as a humanitarian, and, and she'll be joining us at the Peace Conference. Great. Now, the United Nations part of uh, Rotary and Rotary International, there was a time there when Rotary became a little bit less uh, involved with the United Nations. And it seems like that had to do with uh, some of the internal politics, I would say, of, of that group and organization itself. Since that time, I noticed that it's come back. Rotary has now been asked again to um, assist with some of the United Nations efforts. Right, and what we uh, have seen since the mid-80s here, about eight, 1985, when Rotary picked up the torch on eradicating polio in the world, uh, we brought in, uh, uh, partnered up with the United Nations and, and UNESCO, uh, UNICEF, uh, Centers for Disease Control, and uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation most recently, and the World Health Organization, uh, to help eradicate polio around the world. So our tie with the United Nations and being able to reach out across these areas has certainly uh, uh, increased uh, since the mid-80s. And I understand, too, that uh, with the United Nations, there was actually a reach out for Rotary to get re-engaged because of the fact that the United Nations was being perceived as political. Um, a lot of the efforts seem to be focused from the Western civilization. Is that something that you noticed also? I think that's correct. But in, since we've working more on humanitarian issues, uh, it gets down to the core of what Rotary is. And so we're able to, to connect better. Be when we work on areas of uh, clean water and sanitation, uh, work on uh, health health issues as, as it does with polio or malaria, some of the other issues we're, we deal with, uh, and, uh, and get up into women's and, and children's health, uh, trying to improve those. Uh, a lot of uh, women around the world, probably a third of the population, never see a doctor in their lives, and there's nobody there, even a midwife, to help deliver their babies, and a lot are lost at a very early age. In fact, in some areas, 30% uh, of the loss of death in children with contaminated water is children under five years of age. Wow. So uh, we're continuing to work on those issues, but then once we get past those basic needs, then we need to get up into educational literacy, which Rotary's involved with, and then uh, uh, work our way up into economic community development, which we do with, uh, internationally with some micro lending and some uh, uh, mentoring in those areas, and that works us up into peace. And we have, currently as Rotarians, we have six peace centers around the world. Five of those we give uh, scholarships in for uh, uh, master's programs, in peace and conflict prevention and resolution, and one's a uh, three-month certificate program in Thailand. So we have over a thousand graduates around the world working on conflict resolution. That's great, outstanding. Um, you talked about water and sanitation, uh, community economic development. Those are basically what the uh, Rotary Foundation considers the six areas of focus for um, world humanitarian efforts. What's interesting is uh, peace and conflict resolution is the number one. It's, it's the first one listed underneath the areas of focus. Um, do you have any reason why that would be? Well, part of this uh, development with Rotary, since we're a, a, a non-religious, uh, non-political organization, we're able to get in areas of the world where other, other forces can't because we're in there to help people help themselves and do good around the world. And so there's a lot of areas that allow Rotarians to get back into that other organizations can't reach back into. And so that really gets us up into the peace and relationship development. Good. And when we're able to talk together and develop relationships, uh, then there's more of a feeling of, of safety and security, a comfort level with foreigners coming into my area uh, that I might want to communicate with and, and get to know us better to help us out. So it's um, the humanitarian efforts that actually open the doors for uh, international peace is what you're saying. Right? That's totally correct. Oh, that's great. Good to know. And also with Rotary being uh, already uh, actually involved with and having Rotarians in over 200 different countries, uh, that's substantially larger than the United Nations, correct? Yes, that would be correct in 200 countries and territories. In fact, recently uh, we're back into uh, Myanmar uh, in one of those areas. So, uh, and we're close to opening clubs, I understand, in Vietnam again. Correct. And so yeah. we're, we're working on and been working on education in those areas and helping out with some basic humanitarian needs. But you're right, those connections around the world. When we have, we recently just sent a team from our district to Siberia to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Rotary in Russia. And certainly in, the, in these countries, it's uh, pretty interesting when we're able to connect as Rotarians uh, with some common interests uh, for sustainability and the major human needs 
uh, that reach us out for a better understanding. Rotarians are at the lead of this. Sounds good. Now, uh, with uh, the peace conference coming up, what would uh, you say is your, your number one focus, your priority? Why did you do uh, the chairmanship of the peace conference? That's a lot of work. It's a, it's a big effort. So we decided that if we're going to really take on peace, what does that mean? Because it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. We, we kind of understand it as Rotarians. Maybe we could understand it better. But I think we have some issues, common issues, happening right in the United States as are happening around the world. And so if we bring in solutions to these, could we as Rotarians take on some bigger issues? We take on some issues locally to feed the hungry, uh, to help with education, develop leaders in our school systems and so forth in our own communities and help our seniors and adults. But what if we t could take on things like homelessness? What if we could really take on sex trafficking and keep a little girl out of the sex trade? What if we could save one more kid from dropping out of school? You know, what if we could save one soldier from taking their own life? These are things that are power. That's power that's in our hands every day as Rotarians. And so we put together uh, over this two-day period, January 15 and 16 of 2016, 13 different training tracks with over 140 different experts coming in with solutions to major issues in our personal life and home and school and business, community, international, international trade, film, TV, media, uh, internet, and so forth, and civil rights. In fact, you're, you're going to be in charge of... Uh, <laughs> Uh, as our coordinator for our civil rights sure. track. So yeah. we appreciate uh, your efforts in that, in that arena. Oh, that's my, my pleasure. Thank you. And thanks for uh, making this available for all the Rotarians and non-Rotarians throughout the world. Do you consider um, the focus of peace starting community-wide or would it be an international or is it a combination of both? I think it's a combination. First, you have to have peace in our own lives and in our hearts and in our homes. Uh, when there's uh, domestic violence happening in our homes, our, 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 our violence with our children. Uh, how, can we, how can a person begin to deal with that if we can't handle that right at that core level? And that's happening, that's not just us here, that's in all countries around the world and all societies. And so how do we work together on those issues? And there are solutions to these issues. And that's why we're bringing those to the forefront right now with bringing the experts in, they have blueprints of these. And then where I'm asking the people that attend our conference by the end of the second day to agree on some action that they're going to take back and apply back in their communities or internationally. And so we're going to track this two, three, four years down the road, follow these metrics and see if we can move the needle on any of these major issues that are happening. Very good. It's, it's a good plan, outstanding plan actually. Um, as far as current times to past history, um, would you consider the world as being more violent now, less violent now, um, something that could be changed due to media? You know, I think uh, we were actually, although it may be seem different on the press sometimes on the six o'clock news report, uh, we were in one of the most peaceful times on the planet. And uh, we certainly we have some areas with uh, terrorism and some uh, other crises when we have oh, 51 million people right now displaced because of wars. Uh, that, that's a serious issue that we need to deal with as, as uh, human beings on this planet and how we deal with that in a safe manner, an effective manner, and a humanitarian effort that's right for all, all the people. And so we're going to be uh, dealing with some of, these, some of these issues. But it is, in fact, we have one of our Rotarians, Al Jubitz, out of the, out of the Northwest, who's put together a, uh, a, a schedule on looking at where we are as a peaceful world. And also we're bringing with us Steve Killalay, who's uh, uh, an econo economist out of uh, Australia and a businessman. Uh, it's put together the Institute for Economics and Peace. He'll be joining us. He has a global peace index that looks at a variety of characteristics in different societies, and you're able to pinpoint where the most peaceful nations are. And just recently, this last week, he released the new Global Terrorism Index, which he will be uh, premiering at, at, our, at our peace conference for us to better understand uh, where we have issues, uh, where it's safe to go, where it's not safe to go, but also look at those characteristics that lead to these uh, these problems that we can get behind and begin to uh, begin to take care of. As, as human beings, all of us want to live in peace around the world. I've truly believed that the majority of the population on this planet want to just get up in the morning, take care of their lives, and be able to take care of their families and go to bed at night feeling safe. And I think as Rotarians, that ought to be a core value that we have to help drive that process. That, that is definitely true. Um, as Rotarians in the over 200 uh, countries, how do you see uh, 
the Rotarian from one country to another interacting? Is it actually a, a true family uh, of Rotary, or is it something where there could potentially be friction because of politics? You know, I think uh, what's interesting is Rotarians, when they get together, don't talk politics. We talk humanitarian efforts. We have actually uh, vocational training teams, as you're aware of, that we have teams of, uh, whether it's educators or doctors, we just send a team of, of doctors and nurses and technicians down to Haiti, to port au pay uh, to train other doctors and nurses in Haiti. Uh, there are Rotarians there also. And uh, so we're working on women's health issues. That was a major issue uh, for the Minister of Health in Haiti was women's health. And, and in, that, in those two weeks, they were able to treat 700 women uh, and, uh, and train people on how to read pap smears and do examinations and also detect cancer and how to, how to do the operations and actually do the surgeries. And so that happens internationally. We sent a team last year to Brazil with our educators. They're joining us this year from Brazil. Hmm. Uh, at the same time, we sent our friendship exchange to Russia. Our, our Russian friends, uh, Rotarians, are joining us at the peace conference. Great. Now, question going back to uh, one of the other comments you had is that uh, one of the features you will have at the peace conference is talking about the, quote, most violent areas of, of the world, most violent cities, for example. How do you see that being addressed um, as part of the world peace efforts? Is that something where there's a commonality between those violent cities? Um, and is there a plan set in place to potentially kind of resolve those issues? And I think that's, that's a good point. Uh, certainly we have our, our governments are working towards those ends, uh, but outside of that as Rotarians and as citizens on the planet, we have a, we have a not only a need, but I think it's, it should be a value to us to want to help peoples in other countries and help to maintain peace around the world to make, continue to have this. One of the things that Steve Killalay is going to show us is he's actually put together uh, a system here that studies a variety of, uh, of uh, points, uh, points and KPIs and metrics and data from hundreds of data points that can tell us which projects we work on will lead us to peace in the, on the planet. And so those are, that's an area we're working on. Now, taking a look at, again, back to the, uh, I would say, the, the violent cities. Could you give us a preview, for example, of which cities you saw on that list? Maybe name three of the top ten, something like that. Well, I think you need to come to the Peace Conference <laughs> to see those. Oh, that was good. See those <laughs> good ways. catch. So, I, I like so, that. So uh, uh, I think uh, part of this interaction is, is that learning process. And I'm, I'm going to let Steve uh, uh, be able to tell his story okay. of what he's finding and how he's come up with his data. Okay. But we also are bringing in other experts from our own government, uh, from the military, a uh, former CIA operative, and several other people here that are going to be able to give us an insight of what they really see. Additionally... We're bringing in one of the first Peace Corps members, uh, Chick Dombach, uh, who found out after he got out of the Peace Corps, he was able to go back in and, uh, and help out in those areas uh, after, afterwards and help negotiate peace in these warring areas and then turn it over to the government to sign the actual deal at the end. And, and the current director of the Peace Corps, Kerry hessler Radley, will be joining us. Oh, good. Most recently, uh, Sharon Stone is going to be one of our keynote speakers. Sharon, uh, you might know her as an actress, but she's done a great uh, deal of humanitarian work on AIDS and another uh, variety of issues. She received a 2013 uh, Peace Award, and uh, uh, she recently produced a film, Fem, Women Healing the World. And so it's going to be debuted over at, the, over at our conference uh, as we celebrate uh, uh, women's connection into helping really drive the process uh, more centrally and helping us uh, uh, resolve conflict around the world. Most of the, most of the, the 51 million displaced citizens of the world because of wars right now are women and children. And so uh, we need to look inside of ourselves and our hearts and figure out how we begin to fix this problem. Now, um, what would you consider being the number one driver for the non-peaceful times, non-peaceful countries? Is it economics? Is it religion? Is it a culture? Um, any ideas on that? You know, so there, were, there are probably several areas. Certainly some are uh, different religions or different cultures and understandings, but a lot of them are based on economics uh, and education. And so once we get past the, the initial basic human needs, uh, we all need to be able to earn a decent wage, wherever that happens to be in our economy and the world, in order to be able to take care of ourselves. And so it's, it's better understanding, it's, it's an education process, and certainly as we continue to work in the world and the developing nations on better education, 
uh, causes them to be able to get better paying jobs, which are connected in our, you know, this, this flat world we have now. <laughs> uh, once we connect to the internet, you can program from anywhere in the world. Uh, you can work on the internet sales anywhere in the world. And so our economies are very tied together globally, as you know. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and that's really a focus on the education side, but then we work on the micro lending to kickstart some of those businesses. And some of those we do, the same process we apply in developing countries is happening today, inner city Detroit. Where Rotarians in inner city Detroit, launch Detroit, in fact, that will be one of the speakers at our conference. They do micro lending for $1,000 to $2,500, wow. kickstart a new entrepreneur, and put a Rotarian business leader with them for two years to mentor them through the process to make them successful. Uh, we have to help the homeless over here in the city of San Bernardino, uh, something that's uh, called Launch Initiative. And uh, we have a person that ran a factory over there that used to uh, sell products to NASA, has retooled his factory for artificial needs, is hiring in homeless people, training them in high-tech jobs, paying them that wage, and credentialing them, and a year and a half later, find them another high-tech job out. So we can work from taking homeless, not to subsistence living, but homelessness, to middle class, where they're contributing wow. back to their society and taking care of their families and making an income for themselves. So these are just a couple of those solutions that we're going to be highlighting at the conference. At the uh, local level, we talked a lot about international, and you brought it back to community. Tell us a little bit how people get, get involved. What would be the takeaway from this conference locally, um, local-wise, within a community? So locally, there are going to be activities that we're going to deal with uh, gang violence. For instance, uh, Father Boyle you know, has got Homeboy Industries down in L.A. Probably most people have heard locally about Father Boyle. Rotary's been helping him put in some cooking equipment. And so they also supply uh, uh, baking and, and, and goods out to the retail side from those side. But there are going to be different uh, solutions to those issues. Some of these blueprints you may want to take back to your own community. So if you could help... Uh, a learning out of the city of San Bernardino and you could reapply that to Coachella Valley or reapply it in another city around the country here, uh, that would be a blueprint to take back when you can get behind. Maybe it's an organization that's doing well, just needs a little more support to get the, get the job done. You could look at doing that also. So there are ways to get involved either locally or internationally to help support projects that are happening uh, to continue to create a bigger impact, a bigger footprint so we can really take on these big issues. How about the, uh, we talked about the programs um, that we have available within the community. How about the proactive side, I would say, of conflict? Is there anything that you've noticed that has set strides, been a forerunner for proactive control of conflicts? So in conflicts uh, locally, I think that uh, we've seen that, you know, sometimes we see on the news that our uh, police officers, our uh, uh, sheriff's departments uh, are in the news on how they handle the situation. Uh, maybe not quite correctly. But in reality, most of the work they're doing is, is out in the communities taking care of, making sure that, that uh, women and, and children who are displaced find a home for the night. Uh, they find no of the people who are in need and get them to the right sources. They help keep kids out of gangs uh, with uh, some sports down in L.A. There's a soccer league that was started with the police officers down there that uh, help keep the kids out of the gangs. You stay in the soccer league if you keep your grades up and stay in school. And so there's a promotion there. Uh, I know there's another uh, one we'll be talking about will be a solution where uh, the parent and the, and the child, where the child's beginning to get in trouble, if the parent will join in them with a 13-week program, the parent goes through parenting skills, the child goes through discipline training, and the two come back together to work better together as a family unit. And so some of those are some local, local, local family issues. Right. Um, as far as with the other, uh, other organizations, how does Rotary fit into this, and how are you planning on having Rotary become one of the instrumental organizations for creating this piece? So Rotary is, uh, since we're in 200 countries and territories around the world, and we have you know, over a million, 1.2 million members, uh, I think we, we, have a, we don't have all the ideas, but we work in all sectors of society. So together with non-Rotarians and these different organizations, we get, begin to work together, whether it's in the mental health care, uh, whether it's uh, working with public safety side or the government, it's in academia, uh, uh, business, uh, international community, we can begin to find out where these ties are together and begin to work closely together. International trade, if there was less conflict in the world, would our, all of our economies improve with international trade? Obviously they would. Yeah. And so that whole understanding and, and a reason to keep peace 
uh, and begin to reduce conflict and level the playing field and, and, and help, help our, all of our economies grow helps reduce conflict. And so at the core of things, really, uh, in almost a lot of, in a very lot of conflicts, other than just personal ones inside your family normally, uh, I deal around the money issues in the economy side. And some are making sure that we've helped educate people on that we're just human beings, we're all equal, and we want to help each other. And so there's a, a basic understanding that leads us to peace. We had a show um, recently on children at risk. Uh, it would seem to me that that would be another component of uh, being proactive, for example. Do, are you planning on having one of the uh, programs on that, one of the breakouts? We are on, on, on children at risk and, uh, and, and helping them uh, understand the programs we need to support our children, uh, keep them in their families, keep them in school, and help deal with those interpersonal issues there as well. You know, uh, we have, uh, I think it's almost 200,000 kids today in the United States that don't go to school every day because they're being bullied. Hmm. And I don't think that's acceptable. It's hard, pretty hard to learn when you're not in school. Right. And so we need to deal with some of these issues. Uh, we look at, in our businesses today, uh, I'm sure that on almost every human resources manager's booklet in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the wall, there's something about sexual harassment. Should we have to have that? Can't we fix that problem? Uh, and treat each other as, in, as equal individuals and, and not have harassment in the workplace, even today. And so, so certainly there's plenty of, uh, plenty of issues to work with and with our youth, uh, we'll continue to work on those programs that help support them and we're, we're showcasing a lot of those. We're putting a big focus on uh, human trafficking and sex trafficking. It is a major, major issue in our, in our cities today when, when little boys and girls 10 years of age are taken into the sex trade. Uh, we have to do something about that issue. It's, it's, it's a basic humanitarian issue, and uh, we need to deal with that issue right here at home. It is amazing that we hear about this, yet we never see this, either in the media or whatever, the awareness that this actually happens within each of our communities in Southern California, for example, where we live. Um, with that, thank you very much for your time. I sure appreciate that, and bringing awareness with everything that you're doing for, for peace, Rotary especially. Um, and sharing with us how we could actually get involved, get engaged. Uh, the awareness of everything happening at the World Peace Conference, for example, in, was it January? January 15 and 16 of 2016. That's coming up pretty soon. Please go online to peaceconference2016.org. Register today. Share that with your friends and neighbors. Invite them. This is open to the public. This is not just a rotary event. This is this is an event for all the public to join us from all sectors of society together we can fix these problems. We need your help and hands to make that, get, make that happen. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Again, uh, thank you very much. Please get involved with uh, our peace efforts. I'm sure that we as community members would benefit from it greatly. With that, thank you very much, and we will see you next time.